Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. And it is Saturday night, and of course, you know there's plenty to talk about with the Dallas Cowboys. We have probably the commissioner's party is probably going on in about another hour or so. It's L.A. is about three hours behind me. That'll be the big thing. The owners will get together with some of their, their famous players and stuff. They'll be having, you know, shrimp cocktail and plenty to drink and all that stuff. And, of course, the comments will be flowing as well. Well, a lot of people will blame Dak Prescott. You know, I'm hearing fans, of course, that are saying, you know, you just trying to sugarcoat it because, you know, you got Joe Burrow in the Super Bowl and Dak Prescott sucks and stuff. And they literally just blame the quarterback, forget that the offensive line has had issues. Forget about the vanilla offense that was called. Forget about Zeke Elliott having a torn PCL. Forget about Tony Pollard having, you know, a uh, torn plantar fasciitis or or Michael Gallup being out or Mari Cooper having COVID and hanging out at NBA. It's only Dak Prescott. Well, one Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith is pointing the finger. He's pointing the finger. Yeah, he's pointing the finger at the coaching. He's basically saying our coaches suck. If we're going to get back to where we used to be, back when he was there, as he put it, coaches will have to coach better and communicate better, Smith said. He referred to the coaches um, lack of preserving timeouts to make better calls when to go for it and when not to go for it, kick field goals or not kick full field goals, taking field position versus not taking field position. See, this is one of those things that I've looked at where we always gamble and pretty much on fourth down, we act like we don't have a punter. We're going for it on fourth down all the time. Sometimes, instead of taking that field goal, in fact, you can look at the Ravens and say the Ravens would have been in the playoffs had they took field goals in two of their games instead of going for it on fourth down and calling quarterback sneaks when you don't have a timeout with 13 seconds to go. When to go for it and when not to go for it. They're going to have to do things different like that from a coaching standpoint. So when you think about Mike McCarthy, I mean, let's be real. We went from 6-10, and 10, which was abysmal, to 12 and 5, which was great. We won in the NFC East, which was really cool. We didn't lose to anybody in our division. However, everything goes down to what do you do in the playoffs? In the playoffs, we stink. We struggled against the San Francisco 49ers, you know, after starting out behind. We got into, you know, we, we, we came close. We came close and we just ran out of time. And that's where you start looking and saying, why do we keep wasting timeouts before we really need to? Why do we not know that we have to have the ref spot the football? Why do we go for it in times when we should just settle for the field goal? Basically, here's the thing. The Cowboys play calling is something else. Think about this. We had a successful fake punt. We got it off. Yes. We got a first down. But then we still kept our special teams there on first down. The offense ran out. We had to play a game. So instead of us being able to have a chance to get a field goal, I mean to get a touchdown, we had to settle for a field goal because we got a penalty on the delay of game. We have C.D. Lamb in that game, who was our leading receiver. He had five targets and one catch for the game. I won't even mention Amari Cooper because we forgot that Amari Cooper even exists. So even Troy Aikman basically said, San Francisco rushed four guys. For the most part, they blitzed occasionally, but they were four-man rush team. But a lot of times when you say that, 
then you think they're playing coverage. They mix in some coverage, but there was a lot of single coverage of CeeDee Lamb. I hate to go back to when I was playing because nobody cares. But what I see around the league, it's just not Dallas. I've seen it with a lot of teams. A lot of these offenses want to scheme things. The coordinators, in all, it's all about the schemes rather than this corner is playing soft. He's scared to death. Just run the root tree. Run a comeback, run a dig, run a curl root, run anything. Just keep going after that guy instead of trying to scheme shit. Sometimes, you know, it bothered me with Jason Garrett because Jason Garrett always liked to feel like, you know, I, I'm a Princeton grad. I'm smarter than everybody else in the room, but kept outsmarting himself. And it was just like, damn, what the hell are we doing? You are the dumbest smart guy in the world that we've ever seen. And so it ends up leading to not getting it done. We got talent. We got guys we know perform. I I mean, I'll put Amari Cooper against anybody. I'll put Dak against any quarterback. But if the coaches don't do their job, which is to put the players in a chance to succeed, I have to agree with Emmett Smith. The coaches have to coach better. They have to understand the strengths and the weaknesses of the individual players and the situation as well as the other team. And too many times we just got too vanilla. And to me... This offense that we're running is like the bully offense. And by that, I mean it's predicated on basically saying we can just man up one-on-one and we're just going to beat you and we're going to pound you in submission. That used to work when the Dallas Cowboys had better talent than everybody else. But now, because of free agency, because of salary cap, everybody is watered down for what they used to be. And this is when the coaching matters, when you can get an advantage from what you do from the coaches. And so, yeah, I'm on board with Emma Smith 100% saying that, hey, the coaches have to do better to put the players in a position to succeed. And right now, they're not doing it. And if they don't get their shit together... I can guarantee you that Dan Quinn will be there to take over for Mike McCarthy or Sean Payton, who says, hey, you know, I need to call Mike McCarthy and let him know that his job is safe. When somebody, I mean, would you like it? Would you like it if you and your girl, you hanging out and some other guy you think is trying to sleep with her? Calls Joe and says, hey, man, you ain't got nothing to worry about, man. You know, I I ain't trying to sleep with your woman. Do you all of a sudden feel better about your situation? You're like, I'm one step away from her being with you. And that's the straight fact on it. If Mike McCarthy has to feel confident because Sean Payton called, He's already lost his job. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great Saturday night, spending some quality time with the missus. And um, I appreciate y'all. We'll be live streaming tomorrow well early of the game, probably while I'm cooking some of the game day eats. (sighs) Sorry, don't mean to yawn. And um, getting ready for the big game and the end of the season. Hope you're having a great weekend, and I will see you soon. And with that being said, just remember. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters.